Hi everyone, this is Jen Nye with Whole Washington, and this is the how-to video. How to collect signatures for I-1471, which is gonna put universal healthcare for Washington State on the ballot. So the big question is, how much policy knowledge do you really need to have to get out there and start collecting? The honest answer is not much. Um, signature gathering is much more about uh, resilience and attitude and making a genuine time commitment than it is about policy knowledge. But that being said, just having a basic foundation of the bill will give you the confidence to go out there and talk to strangers. Um, just keep in mind that these interactions should be quick and brief. Um, you're not out there to win an argument. You're not out there to win someone over. You're not even really out there to present a case. What you're trying to do is find the people that want to sign. You're trying to find your yeses. And don't get me wrong, you will definitely make connections while you're out there. You'll, you'll be bonding over our horrible healthcare system. Um, and you might do a little recruiting along the way. But for the most part, um, that saying, be bright, be brief, be gone, it really applies here. So you're gonna wanna get some um, phrases in your pocket that you feel comfortable saying um, and that just come out naturally and don't worry about trying to change it up for different people, just stick with what works um, and keep it really simple. So uh, in order to get your yeses, you're gonna need to understand and explain what it is. So when someone asks me, what's this all about? Or what's your elevator pitch? What I just say is this would establish the first nonprofit, publicly funded, privately delivered healthcare system in the country. Um, if someone says, what's it modeled after? I would say something like it's probably closest to Medicare for all, but at a state level. Um, but in a nutshell, it just means that we'd all have health care and it wouldn't be attached to a job anymore. And that's usually sufficient to get that signature. Um, inevitably, though, you will get the question, um, how is this paid for? Who's going to pay for this? And the way I answer that is, I say the predominant source of funding is still employers. It's just that instead of buying individual plans for their employees, they would be paying a payroll tax that goes into a trust and pays for our healthcare expenses. Usually again, that's plenty enough. If not, I, I always try to say what that means for us is that we're not gonna be subject so subjected to those insurance company costs anymore. We won't have to deal with premiums or deductibles or co-pays. Um, sometimes I will also say if we're, if we're actually getting into numbers, um, and I try to avoid that, but I, I can say if you have a job, the most you would be paying would be a 2% payroll deduction. So it would be coming out of your paycheck. It would be nothing that's out of pocket. Your employer would take care of it all. And in fact, uh, in order to retain employees, they might very well just pay for it, your, pay for it themselves and you wouldn't pay any part of it. Um, I try also very hard to just not bring up the capital gains piece. Um, it gets, it's just too complicated. Um, but what I do say when asked, I say, yes, there is a new capital gains tax in the legislation. It's 8.5%. Um, I say that it is um, constitutional because it is uniform. It's 8.5% for everybody. We take the largest exemption that we possibly can, which is 15,000. But other than that, it's just a straight 8.5%. However, it does not uh, apply to home sales. It doesn't apply to farm accounts. It doesn't apply to retirement. It really is just going after um, 
those profits from investment. Um, so beyond those two biggies, you'll get those randoms. Well, what about Medicare? Or what about um, when I go out of state? You know, those types of questions, those are genuine good faith questions, but you don't need to know the answers to all of them, especially not to get started. You can always rely on the website. There is a robust FAQ section on there and just get used to promoting that. It's a way that you don't need to memorize anything. The, um, the, the uh, questions are really comprehensive and they're broken out by um, topic. So they're really easy to read. Um, one thing you'll kind of get used to is telling the difference between a good faith question and a bad faith question. There are people that are just looking to pounce on the possibility that this might be socialism and to, you know, uh, diminish it or degrade it or whatever. I personally take every opportunity to embrace the word socialism. I cheer it on, depending on where you live, um, you may not want to go that route. Um, so some tips. Let's just talk about some, some tips about being out there and the actual interactions that you'll have. One thing you'll want to do is kind of um, adjust your approach according to the pace of the crowd. So let's say it's really crowded and it's um, a pretty favorable crowd. What you might want to do, and I've just made these myself using some stuff that's on the website, is printing these at home and laminating them. So I just kind of stand up in a crowd and I just kind of hold this and people come to me. I mean, it really does depend on the crowd, but boy, that it's really easy. They just come right over and they do this motion. It's the cutest motion ever. And I'm like, yes. Um, if, if, it's, if it's not that crowded and you're going to have interactions with people, the best advice I can give is to have a human interaction first. If there is any time at all to say hi and have them hi back, do that. Make eye contact. Ask how they are. And if there's any way that you can possibly get in two sentences over one sentence, you'll have a little bit more luck because their brain is trying to process what you're saying. And if you're just constantly saying universal health care for Washington State and they're not getting what is being asked of them, they, they might just walk right past you. So if you can slow it down a little and just say, hi, my organization is collecting signatures to get universal health care on the ballot. Would you be willing to sign this petition? Just really slow it down and let them hear what you're saying. Um, it might even be slow enough where you're kind of going to groups of people, say people are in a park, people on a beach, they're already congregating with each other. Um, this can be a little bit touchy because um, you're intruding on their space. So I always apologize. <laughs> I always say, hi, everybody. I am really sorry to interrupt your blanket time, your beach time, your friend time. Um, and then I sometimes use my name and I say, my name's Jen. Um, if you can ever throw out the word volunteer, always helps also. I think there's a, you know, a general kind of um, a no reaction to people that are paid for signatures. So knowing that you care about this issue enough to volunteer um, is also an in. Um, another tip that I have is to kind of get used to having your board out and ready and kind of uh, almost getting them to take it. Um, it's a natural inclination to want to kind of grab a hold of something that's being like proffered out to you. So, um, and it's a fine line between that and being too pushy. So just, just be aware, but just kind of like ease that action of, you know, presenting it at their writing level to them. 
Um, so say that someone agrees to sign and you're kind of explaining what they're, they need to fill out on the petition. I, I would definitely do that, make sure that they're a registered voter. Um, but what I try to not do now, which I used to do, I, I just stopped talking. I always used to think that I needed to fill that space uh, with information, like tell them more about it, get them really pumped up. But if they're already silent, what is much better for your energy levels and for their writing abilities is just to shut up, just let them write um, and then thank them after. If you feel that it's helpful to give them um, a quarter sheet on their way, you can, but if you've already got their signature and it feels kind of like a one and done, just let them go and save your energy so you can keep on going. The other thing you might want to do is just, um, you know, keep your head up and be aware of other people that might be wanting to sign while someone is signing. So you'll probably start off with just one board, maybe two. And you have two so that especially if you get, you know, a couple, you can, they can both be signing at the same time. But uh, once you get into it, once you start getting into it, um, you're going to want to have multiple boards and you'll want to be aware of people that are kind of like easing over to your space. Another thing I do, like if I have two people signing I have the, the sign up so other people know what the action is all about and they might just come over and want to sign too. And there is just nothing, nothing like having multiple boards going at once. I mean, pizza is great, but have you had five or six boards going at once? It is amazing. So um, another thing that you should really get used to doing is just being able to say, I don't know. Um, so it, practice it a couple times to say, you know, you know, I'm not sure and I don't wanna give you bad information, but what I can do is give you this uh, quarter sheet and it has a QR code, it goes right to the website or show the quarter sheet on your petition board. But just get used to being okay with not knowing the entire legislation. Um, the other thing is, is knowing that you're going to have some lulls and they can be painful. I am telling you a couple weekends ago, I thought I reached my absolute bottom. I was just getting no after no after no, and it felt really personal. Um, but do whatever you got to do to shake yourself out of that. Go get yourself an ice cream, um, change your location. M maybe it's time to call it quits for the day, but always, always, always go back out. Just know that it always feels weird at first. You're always, always going to feel a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of dread, but it goes away really fast. Um, especially if you can go out on consecutive nights. It's really helpful just to get a few nights under your belt and just know that you're going to go out there and focus on completing sheets. It's, it's a really fun thing to know that you are doing important, vital work, but that it's so tangible. It's so tangible that you, you can try for specific numbers or completing sheets. It's really great that way. Um, and utilize uh, a buddy. Uh, maybe for the first time you really, really want to go out with uh, another volunteer that's collected before. Totally makes sense and we will do everything we can to partner you up. Use Slack for that. It's really good for making those kind of connections. Um, but the other thing you can do is just take out a friend. Maybe your husband will go with you and, and hold a sign. Just have them hold the sign while you do all the interacting. Just having someone else there to kind of commiserate with and celebrate with, it's wonderful. 
Um, at some point then you might feel some self-motivating factors coming into play and you might want to go out all by yourself and, and just, you know, keep chipping away. And that's lovely. But uh, if you want, always go out with somebody because people can be really weird and it's really nice to have um, a co-conspirator in this. So uh, I hope that these tips help and I hope that you have um, the belief that I'm trying to impart that you can do this. You don't need to read the bill first, I promise. Just you might want to go through the FAQs, take a look at the website, especially the what's included page is really great. The how we're going to pay for it page is really great. And then beyond that, it's really just going out into the real wor world and starting. But I promise you, you can do this. And I promise everybody, we can do this. We just have to put in the hours. So let's get out there and let's get to 400K. Thanks, everybody.